There was once a wealthy banker travelling from London King's Cross to a conference in the heart of the City of London. This was during a time when police officers were poorly paid. It was a time of great austerity, where all public sector workers were on reduced wages, and a time when he could only afford two luxury brakes on his motor cruiser on the Thames every year. The banker was a member of the Conservative Party. Like its leader, he was a Christian and believed in the Christian values of hard work, strict discipline, and the God-ordained principle that he was the rich man in his castle and the poor man belonged, well, at his gate. In fact, he and his family sung hymns about this every Sunday. He thanked God that he was created as a member of the English ruling class and that God had created the working class to serve him and his neighbours. Rounding a bend in the road and just before he reached the tube station on foot, he noticed a loud commotion. He went to investigate. There were other commuters walking by, and as he approached, he watched several shake their heads, check their phones, and begin entering the station via the subway nearby as they passed on the other side of the road. Feeling a sense of civic duty, he approached the man. He could see instantly he was old, haggard looking, unshaven, and he did not look to our banker that he had ever taken the time to wash. Indeed, as our banker approached the figure trying to crawl back into a dirt encrusted and shabby sleeping bag, he was aware of that body odour smell, common in poverty and homeless homelessness. He was moved instantly to wonder about the man's drug habit, his alcohol abuse, his failed relationships, and how he had misused the opportunities given to him by this conservative government. As he got nearer, he could see the man was bleeding. Stopping and looking down at this ball of rags on the London pavement, wet after a heavy summer shower, he was amazed to see that even beggars bleed. Inwardly, his sense of fear and disgust welled up all at once, his eyes searched the man for a weapon as he held out a bloodied hand and appeared to mumble something about asking for spare change. Our banker knew it was illegal to give anything to street beggars. It encouraged them into dependence and away from the Christian root of honest hard work. Our banker remembered how Ian Duncan Smith, on his way back from touring Nazi concentration camps, had said that work would make you free. Looking at this wretch, it seemed to our hero like he had never done a day's work in his life. And the state owed him nothing from taxes he and other honest people had paid. Consulting his phone again, he realised he may be late for his meeting. A phrase from Jesus Christ about helping those less fortunate than himself flicked into his mind, yet he knew that was okay for the Son of God, but it wouldn't apply here. 
after all, he was no Jesus. And didn't God say only the strong will survive to have dominion over the earth? Was it not a Christian dictum that those who did not work should not eat? Clearly, this was man was no worker, and this is why the other people had rightly and ignored, ignored him and walked on by. He smiled at the man's still outstretched and bloodied hand, and turning on his heel, he said, Get a job, scrounger. <laughs>